We have reconstructed the glacier evolution in the Alps during the last glacial maximum, so it's uh, roughly speaking the last 120,000 years. And to achieve this result, we have modeled the climate of the past and the dynamical glacial response. So it's a joint effort between climatologists, glaciologists and geologists, uh, which allow us to give, new, give us a new picture of uh, how it looked like, what the glacier looked like during the last glaciation. The main novelty of the, of the study is that for the first time we truly model the climate of the past, which means that climatologists worked with complex models and they provided us some temperature and precipitation fields that we use to force our glacier model. As a main result is that for now we have a much better match of the glacial extent with respect to some uh, evidence that we have on the field. So for instance, erratic boulders and moraine which was uh, built by glaciers. So we are confident that actually the model is doing a rather good job, especially around the last glacial maximum, which was 24,000 years ago, because uh, there were a lot of, of tracers on the landscape we can use to verify that actually the model is matching uh, the reality. However, for all what is before 24,000 years ago, the glacier, we have much less evidences because all those traces have been erased by glaciations, which means that here we can only rely on the model. So, and we are actually working uh, quite a lot on improving this now. It's important to better understand the climate of the past, especially if we want to better understand the future and better predict the future. And as we don't have much uh, observation, especially in the very long past, numerical modeling is key to extrapolate our knowledge and, and to explore uh, some scenarios of uh, glaciations in that simulation. And I believe this simulation is especially important because it's also a way to, take, to contextualize uh, global warming in the very long time scale.